So COVID is going on right now. I know yeah. we don't like to talk about it on the show, but something is there is not currently any real treatment for COVID. No, no treatment after infection. There are some things that can be done. There are some approved sort of treatments, but there's not sort of a cure, really, right? Would there ever be a cure? Maybe. I I don't know. I mean, ultimately, prevention, and bear in mind, prevention is better than um, a cure anyway. Don't get it in the first place. Yeah. Probably a better option. Well, this is the thing. With people people with so gay men that are on PrEP, um, you don't see them saying, well, I'll just not take my medicine and I'll take the, the, the HIV medicine mm. if and when I get it. No, no, that's stupid. Don't do that. Um, get the vaccine. All of us are double vaxxed, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, obviously some people don't like the vaccine. Some people are worried about the vaccine. They've been get, given false information about it. They think that it doesn't um, help as much as it actually does. All of this sort of stuff. I mean, I think we've done a bunch of different um, we've done a bunch of different videos on the vaccine. So you can go and check those out. Uh, but obviously that means that some people who are specifically making it a sort of political opinion to be against the vaccine are trying to latch on to ways to, I don't know, cure COVID or to treat it. You might have remembered... Um, Back when Trump was president. Is this about horse yes. antivirals or something? Yes. Uh, you might remember back when, when Trump was in power, he, he said something off the cuff about... Oh, hydroxychloroquine. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this is, we've got a new one of those. It's called uh, ivermectin. Have you heard of it? I have, yeah. Yeah? It's do, been what do you know going about viral it? on TikTok. Well, it's an antiviral, uh, so hopefully... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So, yeah, do you know anything else about it? Um, it's for, like, worms or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, right. uh... It's a broad spectrum anti-parasite uh, anti -parasite drug. What that means is that it's kind of used broadly to not treat any one specific sort of parasite, mm -hmm. but you can use it for a bunch of different things. If you look it up, you'll find that it says it's used for prevention of heartworm disease in some small animal species and for treatment of certain internal and external parasites in various animal species. Uh, you might have heard of it more um, sort of commonly as a horse dewormer, mm. which is true. It is used mm -hmm. to deworm horses. But it is also approved by the FDA for limited use in humans, mostly for specific worm infections. You've got uh, river blindness, which is a specific kind of worm that infects your eyes. Uh. And I think a sort of stomach worm as well. Um, and a few other things. Um, rosacea, a specific kind of sort of um, rosacea that gives you sort of pustules. It's used for that. Um, but very, it's severely limited. Also, the World Health Organization, they've said it is an essential drug, I think mostly for scabies, but really it's not used in the UK. In fact, um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I'm not sure if it's licensed in the UK. I find a post for someone asking for it to be licensed in the UK. There is one product in the UK that uses it and it is a topical cream. So there's no tablets of it. There's, there's nothing, just a very, there's just one topical cream that is approved for use in the UK. Mm -hmm. You can get in something unlicensed in the UK. So you can have a doctor say, okay, look, you need this thing. All of the other treatments wouldn't work. Um, so we can get it unlicensed and basically it's basically like using something off label, right? Mm. Uh, you can do that, but I don't think it's commonly done. Mostly what you get, what you'll get this drug for is for animals to, when they get parasites. Right. Um, <clears throat> and this is from NICE, the National Institute for Healthcare Excellence. Um, yeah, you can use it for rosacea on the skin, um, a chronic worm, inf worm infection by mouth, tablets, and the, the tablets that you get, um, the, the treatment, it's, it's, basically like sort of one dose and you're done. Um, it's very strong and it can be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So you get 200 micrograms per, kilo, per, uh, per kilogram of body weight daily for two days if you're taking it for sort of uh, specific worm infection. Um, and for the sort of river blindness, the eyes, um, you basically get uh, 150 micrograms per kilogram um, for one dose um, taken six to 12 months apart. Um, and you do that until all the adult worms die out. Oh wow! Yeah, that's you're, a long time. Yes, you are not taking this often. Is my is my point? People are still using it. In fact, I've had to look up the FDA website to see what they're saying. The FDA are saying specifically, do not use this. Don't use it. But people still are. Do you know why people might be using it? WhatsApp. No. <laughs> close, close though. There have been a couple of studies. There have been a couple of studies um, that have sort of looked into the use of it in oh, okay. people to treat COVID. Yeah. But. None of them have actually, I mean, look, I'll just read you, um, I will read you uh, the, the sort of a little bit from a study that I read, which was looking at multiple different studies, looking at uh, the sort of efficacy of uh, this drug to treat COVID. It, it inhibits the replication of viruses in vitro, in, in, in test tubes, in the laboratory. It suggests that it would have an inhibitory effect on severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2. It'll have a severe uh, impact on COVID replication in the e early stages of infection. Currently, evidence on efficacy and safety of ivermectin for prevention of COVID is still conflicting. Basically what it's saying is that people have been looking into it 
in sort of test tubes, it can stop the replication of this virus. But that doesn't mean that you can use it in a person, right? Mm. In vitro and in vivo are very different things. You can have a drug that works really well um, in like sort of in a test tube, in a sort of isolated, oh yeah, it'll stop the replication of COVID. You put it into a person, it could kill the person, right? Right. Yeah. And thus far there have that been- That does stop the replication of COVID. Uh, it does the job, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah but then so would a it. bullet. Yep. Yeah. Have we tried that? Are there any studies about that? No, look, there are not. <laughs> if you shoot a test tube for COVID, does it, does, it <laughs> does it work? I feel like that would spread COVID more. Oh, because you yeah. you aerate it, right? You get it into the air. Mm, I feel like true. that's that's a case where it doesn't work in vitro, but oh boy, does it so, work in yeah. vitro? It works better if you shoot the person. Okay. <laughs> no, we're not going to go around know. shooting unvaccinated people. That's not what we're saying here. Okay. Again, I want to I want to put this out there that the people are basically getting this stuff. This they're getting horsey wormer. This is why people are talking about it because they're they're not able. It's not easy to get from doctors. You 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 basically need to get it on prescription. They're not getting it from their doctors. Yeah. Some people might be. They're basically getting the version that's used for animals. Mm -hmm. And right. I looked up a vet website and I've looked up the FDA and they've both said obviously don't use medicines meant for animals because they've only been approved in use of those specific animals mm -hmm. and it might actually harm humans to use them in them. Even though we use the same antibiotics in animals as we do in humans sometimes, the specific formulations of the drugs, the specific strengths of the drugs and also different sort of additives that might be in there for stabilizing the drug or, you know, any any other number of things might not be safe for humans. We have different systems. We have different um, sort of immune systems slightly. Our biology is quite different. Mm. For example, there are diseases that we can get that other animals can't get. There are okay. foods that we can eat that other animals can't eat. You can't give dogs raisins or chocolate. You can't give rats, I don't know, you can't give male rats uh, citrus fruit. Mm. But we love to eat all of those things. Can't right? give people raw meat. You can't give people... Well, sure. you can, uh, can you give people raw meat? Yeah, you can give people some raw meat. Some raw meat. Yeah, a, 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 loads of raw meat. The you can eat raw meat. The issue is the you need to make sure that it doesn't have bacteria on it. Yeah, which is why you can have you can't have a raw burger, but you can have a raw steak because the bacteria tends to be on the outside of the steak mm, rather than on the okay. inside. Yeah, so you can you can eat raw meat. You mm. can't eat uh, there. Are, I mean, there's a bunch of things that we I mean, we can't eat rotting meat, really. Mm. Vultures, mm. other um, other other animals can eat carrion. We, we can. love that stuff. Oh. Yeah, you love it. He loves no, rotting they meat. Love that stuff. Oh, they do love that stuff. Oh boy, <laughs> they, they do. Love that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so the the thing is here that there are there is there is conflicting evidence. There is not any. There's not solid evidence that it's useful. In fact, I found um, I, I found an article from a month ago looking at a preprint, which is basically something that is published sort of before it's properly gone through um, sort of peer review, right? Yeah. Um, it's just said we've got some we've got some of these results. Let's have a look at them. They're going into the sort of journal now, but it's a preprint and it's, you know. Yeah, we've once... done these before where people have drawn scientific conclusions from preprints. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so someone looked into it. A master's student actually uh, looked into it and found that one particular study had just copy and pasted um, a, bunch of, a bunch of information from articles talking about COVID and re word replaced them with a, thesaur with a thesaurus. Yeah, to the point where I think they called uh, they called SARS severe acute respiratory syndrome, um, extreme mm. specific respiratory <laughs> respiratory syndrome, because they were just replacing words with a thesaurus. That study was absolutely called into question. The, yeah. the data that they used was it, it, basically it was withdrawn, retracted, uh, redacted even because of um, e like sort of ethical concerns. Basically, mm. they lied about the paper. And there have been people studying this, right? There are people studying to see whether it can be used, but just because people are studying it now it does not mean that you can use this drug that is used usually for horses to treat COVID instead of getting a vaccine. Just get a vaccine because that has been studied. That has been labeled as safe. We know that that is safe for you. Using a bloody horse dewormer. I don't know how you can be uncomfortable with a vaccine, but really comfortable with horse medicine. <laughs> Right, going into your body. Miniature rant that I've been staving off for as long as this has been in my head. Um, <laughs> I talk about the vaccine fairly often, and often I'm told, well, it's not been approved by the FDA. It actually has been given emergency use authorization for the FDA, and in fact, the Pfizer vaccine has been given FDA approval. It's The reason that it, they haven't had FDA approval, as we've talked about before, is because FDA approval is a lengthy process that requires mm -hmm. a lot of steps and can't be uh, that can't be uh, moved around in a certain way. Yeah. Whereas emergency use, author use authorization looks at how safe something is and looks at the emergency that we're in and says, okay, it is met this level of safety. We are going to roll out because we don't have an effective treatment otherwise, and this will save a lot of lives. Mm. This specific uh, ivermectin has not been approved by the FDA for this use. 
it is used it's supposed to be used in incredibly small doses and people are just basically like popping them themselves because because they think it can help with covid just get the vaccine i i cannot understand how people will say i don't trust like you know fda approval is is what is stopping me from getting this vaccine i've not got the vaccine because it's not been approved by the fda i don't know what's in it it's not been around for long enough and then we'll go ahead and take something that the FDA, if you look at the FDA the website, long, long term effects. I have like I have like seven pages from the FDA up on my up on my computer right now saying, do not do this. This is bad for you. You could die. <laughs> the fact is that it seems to me that people don't really they aren't super bothered about what actually um what the FDA say. They just don't want the vaccine because they're unsure about the vaccine it's a new thing and it's scary um and they're being offered all of these different alternatives that honestly are probably worse for them now it could come down the line that a specific formulation of ivermectin at a specific dose given at specific times by doctors in a specific setting could be beneficial for the treatment of certain um of, of covid right but right now we don't have any evidence to support that and if you're taking that instead of just taking the very simple preventative measure of a vaccine Jesus, man! Like, consider consider why you're doing that. Yeah. So, I, I just want to say, should they be using it? Is is my next is my next little part. Um, and again, I'm going to quote from a specific study here. Based on the current very low to low certainty evidence, we are uncertain about the efficacy and safety of ivermectin used to treat or prevent COVID-19. The completed studies are small and few are considered high quality. Several studies are underway that may produce clearer answers in review updates. Overall, the reliable evidence available does not support the use of ivermectin for treatment or prevention of COVID-19 outside of well-designed randomized trials. Basically what I'm saying here is just because you as a random person off the street sees that there has been a study that says ivermectin could be useful in the treatment of COVID does not mean that you should self-medicate using that because that is one study and just as a person off the street, you're probably not qualified to judge the quality of the data. And do you know who is qualified to uh, judge the quality of the data? You. No. <laughs> the NHS, World Health Organization and FDA, all of whom have specifically said, do not do this, just don't, Can't you could die. FDA. I, yeah, I'm the FDA. The I'm the FDA, and I'm telling you, don't do it. In fact, I do have another quote from. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> another quote from the FDA: Taking large doses of this drug is dangerous and can cause serious harm. For the love of God, please stop taking isolated studies out of context and saying this is going to help. Because what will help is the vaccine. I've, I've said it over and over again. The but I, I just want to reiterate that the science of the vaccine has actually been. Um, been worked on for over a decade we've actually used um we've had studies long-term studies on nra nrna vaccines not specifically for um covid but for um cancers and then also moving on from that for um infectious diseases uh we've had um the we've had studies on them for cancers for over a decade so we do have some long-term idea of what rna um uh vaccines do to your body and the answer is not that much because it's RNA. It won't integ integrate into your uh, DNA. Uh, it, it's just not how RNA works. Um, any any real long term problem with the vaccine? We would have expected to see some evidence of it by now. Specifically, uh, like specifically a few months afterwards, we would have expected to see that, and we haven't. So all evidence points to right now the vaccine being safe. And if you're waiting for long term studies on this vaccine, you you don't understand how it works clearly. Especially yeah. if you're waiting for long term studies on the vaccine and uh, using ivermectin instead, because the studies on ivermectin says it says it's very dangerous and it's only used for very, very, very serious infections. Usually, when all other drugs don't work, yeah, right. It's, it's usually when all the other drugs don't work. Um, and I think my last thing to say on this this little this little ivermectin rant is that I've seen a lot of people talk about skepticism, right? I'm 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 a skeptic. I'm going to be remain skeptical of what's put forward by the NHS, FDA, World Health Organization because I don't necessarily trust them. Now, what I would say to that is that being skeptical does not mean not believing anything. That's not what skepticism is. Mm -hmm. Being skeptical means asking questions, and when those questions are answered with like with you know reliably, then you should accept those answers. If you question everything and disbelieve everything, you're not being a skeptic. You're just you're just not believing anything except for the things that you want to believe, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to be skeptical, about, as skeptical at ivermectin as you are about the vaccine, you would no one would be taking it. The aim of being a skeptic is to no longer be a skeptic. Exactly. Not to be like an eternal, forever skeptic of questioning and then yeah. questioning the answer and then questioning that answer. And, and, and I feel, it. yeah, I feel like a lot of people. Um, and this is okay. This will be anecdotal evidence, but I'm gonna t I'm gonna tell you a story from uh, something that happened to me the other day. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like this applies to a lot of people that um sort of have gotten in contact with me. Someone said to me, look, you're saying that the vaccine is safe. You're saying that this is dangerous, but 
here's a here's a report from the FDA. Um, uh, here's a report from oh sorry, here's a report from the CDC, and this is the thing that people are worried about. It was a report talking about in one town how it, within five hundred like in a group of five hundred people, mm. there was uh, there were some issues with I think the um, efficacy of the vaccine. The vaccine mm. now. That that does seem worrying, you know. Oh, there's some issues with the efficacy, efficacy of the vaccine. Bear in mind, if you look at the if you look at the, the stu- if you look at the report, it's in one town and it looked at 500 people. That does not apply to the entire U.S. It could be a fluke. It could be anything. Um, now that was in the screenshot that the person sent me. So I looked up that report and I read the whole thing. It was a page long, maybe two pages. I scrolled down to the discussion section, uh, wherein it said, "This data should not be used to draw any conclusions about the efficacy or safety." of the COVID-19 vaccine. So my point here is that often, it seems to me, when people are being skeptical, they will see something that makes them question something and they won't seek out the answer. Because yeah, exactly. in that instance, the, exactly, answer, yeah, yeah. the answer was on the same page. Yeah. You can't say, I'm worried about this and then find the answer on the same page and be like, oh, well, I'm still worried about it. <laughs> you can be worried about it, but if a scientist tells you my data should not be used in this way and you start using the data in that way, you're not being a skeptic. You're just hiding your bias from yourself yeah the point of being a skeptic is to want to seek the answers it's to want to have the answers absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah yeah and the answers thus far are uh ivermectin bad uh vaccine, vaccine good. good and even if ivermectin does become helpful still get the bloody vaccine because it's going to reduce the severity of your symptoms reduce your chances of spreading it to other people reduce our chances of getting uh variants and strains that are spread more easily and are more deadly all of those things could happen if you don't get vaccinated. You're gonna, you, you, you are increasing your risk of harming other people by remaining unvaccinated. So please go out and get the vaccine if you can. We've all done it, and none of us have grown an extra limb yet. I've had two of them. Very good. Two, two extra, extra limbs. limbs. No, no, two two vaccines. Sorry, just, <laughs> one, just one extra limb. No, okay, got, good I've to got know. The usual number of limbs, which is how many? Which is three. Yeah, three. Okay. But you lost yeah. a limb. Yes, from the vaccine. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it grew back, surely. They took it away. It was the <laughs> once, payment once. for the vaccine. <laughs> you pay an arm and a leg, but luckily they grow back after a few months. So. <laughs> Tony charged me an arm. Going up and up, <laughs> well, that's uh, institutional racism right there, clearly. Uh, <laughs> no, serious conclusion. Serious conclusion here. There is no evidence to say that ivermectin is going to help you with COVID-19. And even if there were, preventative treatment is always preferred over um, sort of treatment after the fact. So ivermectin potentially being a good treatment for COVID-19, which I hate to even say because there's no solid data supporting that as of this, as of the recording of this, it's, it's not a reason to not take the vaccine. It really isn't. Just go out and get the vaccine. It's quick, it's easy, yeah. and it's free. If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on all SciGuys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SciGuysPod find out when we're doing more live shows.